Hello and welcome. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the fourth episode of Voiced, uh, where we are bringing four pillars of the education system together: uh, learners, parents, educators, and job creators, uh, policy makers, and professionals who are actually working in the real life. Uh, uh, the outcome of the education system they have been through. So uh, I am your host Archana, along with Mick. Uh, I am mother of two self-learners and uh, currently slowing down and practicing minimalism and sustainability. Also uh, trying to uh, be kind of doing zero, zero outsourcing in education, food and um, health, wellness. Uh, Mick is a wonderful uh, co-host with me. Uh, he is a mentor and creative technologist and uh, a disruptive educator. Uh, who is inspiring kids from 20 different countries and kids just love him, you know. So he is from Thailand. Uh, welcome, Mick. Uh, I'm looking forward to have another interesting session today. And before uh, I go ahead and um, uh, introduce our panelist, we'll like to have a minute of silence. So we'll just gather ourselves and we'll uh, uh, keep silence for a minute and then I'll go ahead and introduce the panel, our amazing panelists who are coming from uh, Saudi Arabia, Belgium, Mexico, India, and you know different places. So uh, we'll have a minute of silence. Thank you. Welcome back. And uh, here are our amazing panelists. So this voiced is we are uh, bringing all these four pillars together uh, from different countries across the globe to redesign, rethink and recreate education system, uh, a new way of education system, which should be a learner centric education system. And I have with me a beautiful, cute learner here, Kasmika. Kasmika is a self-learner. She is 14 years old. Uh, she is a creative artist. And uh, she is also a macrame expert. Right, Kasmika? She also does her workshops with uh, all the ages uh, of people, you know. And uh, she lives in Jharkhand uh, with her parents and younger brother. She loves to dance, paint, craft, origami, clay modeling, anything in the art. She just loves doing it. And the question she is currently holding is, and very interesting one is, most of my friends are preparing for 10th grade board exams. Is it one of the necessary option? <laughs> very nice. <laughs> OK, so now we have Elevel Makaisa from Saudi Arabia. She is a parent and educator herself. She is named her uh, blogs and uh, creative things they are doing is wonderfully made kids you know she's a homeschooling mom for four kids and she's also a yoga trainer and meditation seeker uh, she also runs her blogs and youtube channels and uh, families and they are they are actually all of them are helping families uh, in a self-directed learning uh, via different activities and empowering students to be a lifelong learners and tomorrow's change makers. And um, I just love Elliewell's energy, you know. Uh, she has been doing many things. Uh, questions she is currently holding, and it's again very interesting questions is like, how do we get more people to appreciate that formal schooling is just like a conventional bus? And we can reach to the destination via alternate routes, getting on different bus like self-learning and other learning methods as well. And uh, it's actually it will provide a better journey experience. Also, the second question she holds is how can we be, be better co-learners with our kids as we navigate this uncertain future together? Very, very apt question, you know, because uh, many of the parents who are uh, uh, transitioning into this journey, they uh, face this and 
as far my experience goes we are learning more than kids uh, we we are unconditioning ourselves more than our kids so wonderful now we have a you know amazing mentor reflective teacher learner lifelong learner he has been mentor at asmakam for many years our wonderful amazing tushar he has been working for many years with different schools government organizations different alternative schools providing all his valuable inputs he himself is a science teacher and uh, uh, kids at asmakam just loves his experiments with like frugal experiments you know like and um, he is school teacher by choice and interest researcher coach and mentor by training and exposure and counselor by situation and compulsion <laughs> Oh, very nicely put tushar and the question is very interesting you know like he says that we are all a bundle of emotions visible invisible held deep inside and impacting all our beings how can we give space time and patient listening to all that without carrying any judgments uh, like very much apt question for everyone together you know in this uh, world where we all are stressed out and listening is not happening anymore so Uh, welcome to Shar. And another amazing person we have is Jeffrey. Jeffrey is a digital nomad, and he is very pure and down to earth soul. Very simple person. I have been uh, interacting with him for last four weeks. He's such a nice and uh, you know um, very humble guy. Uh, he is looking for. He uh, is a freelancer and he is a technologist. Uh, he is living his dream life realizing projects everywhere on this beautiful planet anyone who wants to do something to change the world or something beautiful in the planet he is with them always you know and the favorite quote he has is you can have anything you want but you can't have everything and uh, making dreams come true not just for my own dreams but especially the dreams from the people around me and uh, i think uh, he is exploring the world uh, he is traveling to different parts of the world soon he'll be in india on my request and uh, he thinks that uh, he believes that the greatest thing in life is to discover one's true passion and operate from that passion to not only deploy yourself to the maximum but find ways on how we can help everyone around us and inspire people and uh, give them the gifts you have got from the universal power you know so the question he is holding is how can i provide real world chances to kids uh and adults as well uh, that grow up in areas where there is no almost zero no access to any form of education very noble vision and noble dream he has uh, welcome jaffrey and uh, now i'll hand it over to mick and mick will take us through a adventurous journey with all these four panelists uh, welcome mick <laughs> All right, thank you, Archana, and welcome everybody. Just wanted to clear something up. I'm not from Thailand, actually. I live in Thailand. I'm from yeah. San Diego, California. But because um, people are gonna go, he does not look Thai, and I'm like, no, I am not Thai. I am uh, Peruvian and Irish, a, a very uh, a mix that no one ever guesses when I ask them. Um, welcome to everybody, and um, we have a round of three questions for each of you, and we'll go one at a time, starting with our learner. Um, our learners are. The reason that we're here trying to figure out better ways to educate because of the system that we went through as kids and its ineffectiveness in many ways. And so we always like to start with our learner because that is the important voice, the most important voice in this conversation. And we have a wonderful learner with us today, Cosmica. Welcome and thank you for being here with us. Um, Cosmica, the question we would like to start out the podcast with is, what do you think about the structure of education? And how do you think it benefits and or harms learners' lives? So first, hello everyone. I'm Cosmica, and thank you for having me. Uh, it's yeah. To the to the question raised, I can't say much about our education system because I haven't been there for long. I have been there for three months when I was nine years old. So the the good. thing i saw that the advantage that ki it was an easy place to make friends as like there were kids uh, all our ages like same age so um, yeah it was easy to interact with them 
and the uh, and the uh, disadvantage. disadvantage was that um, yeah the disadvantage was that they were like everyone was uh, used to judge me for everything like teachers my family members my friends they used to judge me like if i'm whatever i'm wearing whatever i'm doing for my uh, numbers what grade i am in and what i'm doing like they just have to judge so after 3 years i re- uh, after 3 months actually i realized that it wasn't me after Three months that I was scared to talk to people, and I was like, "Oh shit, where's my mom? I can't talk to them without her." So, uh, but before school, I I was I was like free. I was I used to talk to people. I initiated, and after like, oh my god, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I was scared uh, basically. So yeah, so that's how I decided to leave school and continue my own school journey. and uh, yeah that uh, so that's reason i know like why i'm doing homeschooling so yeah you know, that what's, really- a, what's amazing cosmica in your answer is that the advantage and the disadvantage are both similar in that they're socially based right nothing to do with academics other than the judgment part but the thing you liked was people of your own age being there and the thing you disliked yeah. was the treatment from some of them which you know yeah. when you go to school it's the only time in your life where you have to make friends with people that are the exact age as you who live in the yeah. area you live in and in yes. this world like we're friends with people from multiple generations yes. from all over the world and it's only yes. a traditional school where we're told no you have to be friends with other 9 year olds who live in this neighborhood right near you and also, so it's interesting so i think there. school made her Uh, to uh, fear the things and not express herself you yeah, know and she was doing freely before uh, in the free environment so it was kind of suppressing her feelings and her creativity i guess that's what uh, you yeah. wanted cosmica right Do yeah you feel and i was free again yeah. cosmica now that you that once you left the system and were able to unschool on your own journey did that give you the same feeling of freedom you had before you entered traditional school Yes, actually, better than that. Like I improved very much. Like yes, I have to do this, that, and my conversation power, and and lots of creative stuff I've learned, like archery and stuff. So yeah, I grow. <laughs> That's amazing. We're so happy to not just have you here with us, but to hear that you're on your journey now. that you're self directing it and the smile on your face tells us that you are doing what's best for you and i hope that more kids get the opportunity that you're getting now to pursue their own interests and to educate themselves because it's obviously working well for you thank you so she's much karmika for your insight yeah, she's an entrepreneur also make i forgot to tell you that she just sells her uh, macrame uh, art yeah and i do what i love to love to get that you know so she is entrepreneur she is an artist she is actually teaching big people like adult people uh, this art so wonderful <laughs> none of that surprises me at all just in a short time <laughs> conversing with you cosmica like we're very impressed and and it's great to have you here and thank you for your first answer that was uh, excellent um our next question is for our parent um olivelle who is in saudi arabia welcome um our question for you um for the first round Why do you think parents have become more uh, obsessive and protective about parenting especially in this generation because I I we grew up uh, I did at least as a latchkey kid and we could walk to school and do all these things that just aren't possible anymore and what do you kind of what do you feel is the basis for this obsessive protective nature to parenting in this generation Okay um first of all hello everyone um blessed day to everyone and I'm um, thankful for this opportunity to speak here. I'm reminded of a story of how someone saw a butterfly coming out of its chrysalis. Witnessing how hard it was struggling, this person was filled with compassion and tried to help the little creature by helping tear open the chrysalis so it can go out more easily. So instead of flying, the butterfly fell to the ground, unable to spread its wings. Turns out that butterflies needed to struggle because of their movements. it pumps fluid into their wings helping them expand and be strong enough to do all things butterfly related so i think the same goes with parenting we instinctively mm. want to protect and help our kids in every way possible but the problem is when we overdo it right and we can 
do more harm than good because the children don't really learn how to be independent thinkers or how to believe in their own ability to handle difficult situations. Others, well, they just become rebellious because of the lack of freedom. When it comes to schooling, I think we work so hard to get our kids to the expensive schools and hover over them to ensure they get high grades and achievements. And we do this so much that we don't realize our children could probably thrive more in a different learning environment, different approaches. I think that school, particularly traditional formal, formal school, is simply a vehicle Imagine it to be like a bus, one that transports students to the destination, which is to be educated. And there are many other ways to get to the same destination. You have homeschooling, online distance learning, self-directed learning. It's like riding a car or a bike instead of the bus where most of the other kids are. And some of these alternative learning modalities are in fact more effective in helping our children become future ready and yet we don't consider these options. So I feel that as parents who want the best for our kids, same thing when we do with um, helicopter parenting, we just want the best for our kids, but we just need guidance to turn around and do it um, properly or you know, in a more beneficial way for our kids to help them learn in new ways and to learn better. Yeah, I love that. The, you're right, it's a parent's natural instinct to be protective, but knowing where to draw the line is, is actually where parents find difficulty and I made a series of parenting videos a few years back, and there was a whole episode about causing fear through helicopter parenting. It is so, like, as an educator, I would see the results of that style of parenting in their kids as they come to school, right? They are uh, afraid of adversity, of difficult um, work. They tend to take the easy route every time. They need constant validation that everything is okay. And that's not what you want in your child. They get stressed out quite easily. And it's like, you want them to run head first into adversity and embrace it because they know my mom and dad care most about my effort. If I try my best and work my hardest, the results will come eventually as opposed to performance-based, right? Where they're like, Why don't you know this? I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Irony is that make an level is that parents want best for their children, but they are kind of destroying their life current, like for the future, they are destroying their present and which is harming uh, in a big way, you know, so they don't understand it until they grow up. So wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much. Alba. I really like, uh, I take to heart what you say as a new parent, especially having seen the results of exactly what you're talking about. And they're, they don't, it doesn't turn out well for the children, but the parents are doing it. They, they, from their heart, they're doing what right. they believe is best. They just don't have, the knowledge themselves to know what is the best way to to help their kids. And so um, I think your insights are, are spot on as far as what would be more beneficial to their kids. So thank you so much for that. Um, we are going to move to our first question for our educator, Tushar. Welcome, sir. Um, this was a question that I enjoyed answering as an educator myself, and Archana <laughs> knew that I would. Um, what are some things that you love about education in its, in its uh, current form? And what are some things that you hate or very strongly dislike about education in its current form? So, uh, current forms, again, you know, uh, some of it we had uh, our uh, previous panelists just shared, you know, that uh, the role parents play more often than not, education is actually for the child. It is a decision by the parents. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, with well intentions, you know, of course, no one, everyone is looking for their children, their child should be doing well. But unknowingly, as you know, uh, while in this journey, I have, uh, you know, read that just being, becoming parent is not easy. We need to realize that as well, you know, <laughs> because things are changing so fast in every domain, yet it is not changing in education. You know, largely, it is what you used to be because, you know, in the formal schools, when I talk about it in the formal schools, it's still the chalkboard in front, children sitting in rows and columns. And here is someone who is continuously kind of, you know, delivering and expecting that to be reproduced in the so-called exams. You know, that mode of assessment has to be very, very different because, you know, children are writing blogs, you know, they are creating videos. Okay. They are 
much much smarter they are way ahead of most of us in many ways you know it is that uh, you like it or not opportunities are very much there just don't hold them you know so we have to take back steps and watch it comfortably we don't do that we have to unlearn and understand that there are multiple platforms what used to be you know the teacher was one who used to know everything and he used to in bits and pieces unfold now that era is over you are obsolete as a teacher mm -hmm. children are not engaged at all they say that again he is going to do the same you know so they are switching off <laughs> and especially in this uh, you know the previous two years we have seen enough you like it or not they are unmuting the camera is off it may not be for the technical reason it is you who is in front boring them often you know so it's as an adult you know whether parent or teachers we need to come down to the level or you know what is it that engages them we still don't know <laughs> you know like how many of us can actually you know introduce or you know bring in games they like games now what are the qualities of games that we can bring in in our subject or you know? so all of that i'm saying you know i'm learning every day i am not what i was yesterday <laughs> that's a it's beautiful you answer you yeah, your students, you your students are you lucky to have you absolutely because um there's not enough educators that think that way we're no longer the dispensers of knowledge when kids absolutely. carry the world information in their pocket our job is to facilitate to help guide them on paths and oftentimes give them chances to teach us things. There are many things that they can teach us. And when it comes to games, as you were talking about, the psychological needs fulfilled by games are autonomy, um, number one, which they get none of in school, um, relatedness, you know, feeling like they and other people are doing things together, and um, competency. And again, if you're not giving them a chance to achieve things they care about, where are any of those qualities coming up in the school day? The answer is they're not. And we need to incorporate those things more to fulfill those psychological needs they're missing in the current system. So you, your students are lucky to have a teacher with that kind of mindset. You're a great example and model oh, for them. Wonderful, of, wonderful Tushar. It's been yeah. like you have to meet in uh, person to Tushar, you know, make and someday, someday it will happen, I guess. So yeah. wonderful. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a, that's a yeah. great answer and and, yeah. and you know like that's i i share that same viewpoint with you as far as the best way to help my kids is to get out of their way sometimes create pathways and support them down those pathways and get through our mandatory work as quick as we can and say okay that's already done now what do we want to do together yeah. so yeah. excellent thank you tushar um we'd like to welcome our our professional on this panel jeffrey um who is currently in mexico awesome place to be. Um, Jeffrey, as a professional, do you think current education prepared you for real life work? Do you think that the system as it is now is what, you know, prepared you to do the kind of work you're doing now? So uh, before I answer the question, I first want to thank you for having me in, uh, in, in, in this uh, podcast. I'm really honored. And I also want to express my respect for the other panel members because I'm really impressed by uh, by the first answers to the first question. And I am so happy that through this, through this uh, podcast, their voices are being broadcasted to the world. I think everybody, the whole world should, uh, should watch or rewatch this, uh, this episode. It's amazing. Awesome. So to answer your, uh, your question about the education system, what I would like to say about that is that the education system that I was in prepared me to be a good worker bee. I even call it uh, a slave to the system. And that's a recent insight that I got because I was the good worker and I did enjoy my job so far. And I wasn't really aware that that it, that I was being a slave to the system. It's only uh, recently that uh, my heart was beating and telling me, Jeffrey, you're not doing what you're meant to do in this world. Uh, and make a change. So it wasn't an easy change, but I just, that's where I finally, at 35, decided, OK, I'm going to sell everything I have. I'm going to sell a good, beautiful life, but a slavery life and follow my true passion and uh, go around as a digital nomad. And I think that is where the school system failed me most. N nobody ever helped me like, hey, Jeffrey, we're going to discover your passion or we're going to do activities where you can find who you truly are, what you can contribute to this world. 
Um, it did help me to reach a certain level of thinking, but it also learned me how it, it, it learned me to do what I'm being told to do by my by a boss or, or by somebody who has a project or I'm always eh? you're, you're being told to do and make sure to reach deadlines. And I, I think a nice example in the school system is homework, for example. And I want to say that homework by itself, yeah, it's, it's nice. Of you. But homework is actually, yeah, it's a task that you get from your teacher and you have to make sure to hand it in the next day or, or the next couple of days. And if you don't reach that, that, that deadline, there are consequences. So you are prepared for the real worker bee life, in my, uh, in my opinion. And it also teaches you to do it right and certainly not to make mistakes. Like uh, if you make a mistake in school, it's punished. It's with a red, uh, a red stripe and, and you lose points. And if I reflect back on one of the jobs that I was in in IT, uh, I, I had great colleagues, but there were some, uh, there were some uh, bad, bad IT system, bad technical uh, systems in place that, that need to be addressed. But nobody dared to address the problems in the, in the IT environment because they were all scared to being pointed at if, so, if something went wrong or if, if they did something wrong. So I think that's another point where the school system fails because 90% of all my knowledge comes from things that I did wrong. I learned from mistakes. I didn't, yeah, of course you make a start by learning uh, about a topic, but I did de- I de- my, my knowledge by the mistakes that I make and, and it's, it's an amazing thing. But what school should also have learned me, in my opinion, is how to deal with mistakes. Like if something goes wrong, if I do something wrong, if, if, if a colleague of me, if we work together, it goes wrong. How to deal with that? How to make something positive? Out, uh, but we don't know. So we, we, I, I learned it from myself a little bit, how to give good feedback or uh, 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 how to also help people overcome the fear they have of it goes, when it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Just fix it and, and learn from it. That's, that should be something that, uh, that uh, or that is something that, in my opinion, is missing in the in the current or the traditional school systems. Uh, and then again, yeah, it didn't help me to find my true passion. It didn't teach me how to deal with mistakes uh, and how to learn from it. And it didn't teach me how to communicate with people around me, how to work in, in a team, how to discover talents in other people, because that's another point that I'm missing. Uh, um, you can, it's not up to yourself, in my opinion, to discover your own passion. It's other people around you that help you discover it. And that's my, uh, that's why it's my mission statement now, make dreams come true. I travel around the world. I meet so many great people and so many have projects in their hearts that I think, wow, please realize them because this is how we change the world for the better. But that's where I want to step in and, and help people discover not only their true passion, but also... Uh, help them discover that they can do it. He, whatever project you have, how far-fetched, uh, whatever you think, like, oh, it's too difficult, or I'm not, never going to make it. Yes, you can. That's why my uh, my set, my favorite quote is, you can have anything you want in life or you can realize any project you want. But, but of course, it comes with, uh, with some choices. You can't have everything. But if this is what is in your heart, you can do it. You can, you can go for it and... I step in and I'm very honored that I can help some people realizing their dreams, their true passion, their true projects. And I think that should be in the school system as well. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. The current system is about being, what it teaches is number one, passivity. You Mm -hmm. are not the, 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 you are the, in the passenger seat on your learning journey and success is measured in conformity. The ability to produce the same exact kind of work with one correct answer as everybody else. And that does not promote individuality, entrepreneurship, or any of the things that we really highly regard. And you've had to self-discover those things, coming back to self-learning, you know, what Archana uh, promotes and what Cosmica was just talking to us about. You cannot get that in the the current school system as it is. You had to discover it on your own as an adult. And imagine what would happen if we were able to show this to kids at a young age that making mistakes are opportunities to learn. Also, just your homework comment. I, I don't give my kids homework ever, I, even if it will get me in trouble. And I tell them every day why I don't. I said, you, you've you already put in a seven hour day. Go home and be kids. What do you want to do? You want to take Taekwondo, violin lessons, go make video games, go play games, play outside. Go do those things now and I'll see you tomorrow. And I remind them of that because it's a conscious choice I make as an educator. It was, uh, it to, was to really wonderful. To impose that upon them. You know? uh, it was really wonderful, Jeffrey. And we have our learner ready for her next question so yeah so 
Cosmica, your second question. Um, Self-learning, the journey that you're on is non-competitive. And of course, the school system is competitive by nature. Um, how do you keep yourself uh, disciplined and motivated, being that there's no competition around you or grades, and it's really just up to you to educate yourself? How do you keep yourself motivated and, and passionate about what you're doing? Uh, yeah, I accept that self-learning is non-competitive, but the word competition means one has to win and other has to lose, even if they are friends. <laughs> so I have to defeat them. So I don't like that concept. So I made me, myself, my competitor. Like, for example, whenever I make an artwork, I used to set it as my benchmark. And whenever I make another one, I try to make it better than my benchmark and more perfectly. Uh, same with education. If I want to learn something, then I learn it. I don't need any motivation or any competition for it because I want to learn it. So I will learn it. <laughs> so, yeah. And I do get bored sometimes. So I used to ask myself, like, aren't you getting bored by getting bored? So do some work. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, I used to do some work. And then I used to um, help mom, help my brother with origami and do, uh, drawing and lots of things. Like, there's many things I can do. So... Yeah, I don't need, uh, sometimes my parents uh, used to show me like, see Cosmica, this is bird nest, something. Yeah, this is bird nest, for example. You can, can you make it with threads? So I take it as a uh, really? um, challenge that, yeah, let, let me try. Let's see if it comes or not with thread. So yeah, I take that as um, my motivation. Yeah, and Be yeah, nice. that's how I... Yeah, that's you're fantastic that your, your competition is you yes, to, to better improve yourself and that you don't need it from outside. I often have to remind students of that. If that child does well on something, that doesn't help or hurt you. You're on your own journey. Ignore what they're yes, doing yes, and focus on their journey. And I yes. have my own wonderful, journey. wonderful, Kasmika. That's what I think <laughs> everyone gets to the point when they get into self learning journey coming out of the conventional system because conventional system is always talking about competition. And as you rightly said that yeah. it's not that someone has to win and other has to lose, right? Uh, why do we want others to lose? Like it's the competition with myself. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. The <laughs> other part too of that is that, um, and we've heard this from our learners in the past, when I'm choosing something I'm interested in, motivation is not a problem. Right when you're you're choosing what you love to do, yeah, of course I you're motivated to do, to do it. it. Yeah, of course. It. Yes, I love it. Thank you so much, Cosmica. Great insights. Um, back to Oliveville uh, for your second question. Um, what do you think scares parents, and what what do you think makes them kind of force their expectations on their kids? Okay, I think social media has a lot to do with that, as worse than the culture of parental competition because you know when you see these postings of your friends having their kids uh, getting these awards and medals and having their high grades it kind of scares parents to to think about their own children is my kid doing well is my kid going to be left behind so parents put a lot of pressure on their children to do well in school believing that it is the key to their success in the future so I think that the challenge that our world today is facing is that we have to understand the one that we are growing up in now is so much different than the, the previous generation. So we can't impose the standards and ideas that we had about education decades ago, right? And it's as Tushar mentioned, it's still happening now. We're having the same kind of educational system and things have changed so much. I mean, I just attended a a parents boot camp from School of Humanity a couple of days ago, and they gave example of possible jobs in the future. Wholeness mentor, algorithm bias auditor, data detective, space My pilots, God. augmented reality journey builder, and even end of life coach. I mean, are we even considering these things in our children's education? It's also predicted by 2025 from the Future of Jobs 2020 in World Economic Forum that the time spent on current tasks at work by humans and machines 
will be equal. That's just mm -hmm. three years from now. I mean, let that sink in. Automation, robotics, artificial intelligence, these will take over millions of jobs. Future jobs will be more humanistic because anything that can be done by machines will be done by machines. Therefore, we need to promote creativity, innovation, and collaboration. This is the things that our kids need. I met this brilliant young lady named Raheen Fatima last year, and she had this panel interview discussing the future of education. One of her panelists, Tom Markham, a founding father of Project Based Learning, said, the future is not going to be tranquil. We have to accept that. So we have to move the focus from quadratic equations and the water cycle to SDGs, meaningful community involvement, and engaging the issues of the day. I think that's what's really going to help our kids, not grades. Yeah, I love. I'm really a big fan of the World Economic Forum and the skills that they're promoting, especially for like 2030 and beyond, because they're tech agnostic skills. They don't have to do with current. They're not saying learn coding. They're saying creativity, social intelligence, um, critical thinking, decision making. These are things that will help kids regardless of what jobs present themselves in the future. And we have to focus more on those types of skills than such specific ones or, or you know, the hundred year old ones that we're teaching now. So um, I'm really on board with you as far as, um, you know, following what the World Economic Forum and others are letting us know the kids are going to have to have. Um, AI is, as AI replaces things, your humanity becomes a much more highly regarded resource. If robots are doing surgery for doctors, their bedside manner becomes everything. Their ability to soothe their patients psychologically. It's not about who has the steadiest hands. It's and, and I think on the human level. And that, that's not I, being taught to these kids yeah. because of social media. I think I really appreciate, Aliwil, that you have not outsourcing the education and learning of your you are so much aware and i wish every parent on the planet can be so much aware as you and you know you have taken things in your hand but i would not say taken things in your hand but you have given the full authority to your children and uh, it's wonderful you know uh, really appreciate that yeah. i also follow the founder of school of humanity on linkedin i saw her as well and i think what they're offering is amazing and um that, that's really cool. The jobs that you mentioned, I hadn't heard any of those job titles, but um, <laughs> that, that is where things are headed, regardless of whether you want to accept so that or not. So much prepared as a parent, you know. I Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Tushar, your next question, our next educator question, another one that's I, I enjoyed very much answering when I was a panelist. Um, if you have the authority to design your own learning space or school, what does that look like? Oh, wonderful. I would love to be a part of such space and how collectively we can create it. All the stakeholders will have equal space, time and resources. You know, there's going to be no one will have any advantage. Doesn't matter the age, the experience and everything. End of the day, each one will be learning something and sharing about it. So, you know, what is the, you know, the best learning moment or, you know, ideas that you explored would like to, a space where, you know, all is happening, whether you are alone, in pairs, in smaller groups, for some time, whether through, you know, using the digital media, libraries, or the maker's asylum where you are breaking, making, cutting, pasting, you know, or just watching what's happening around. Because, you know, in the, the process of doing, doing, doing many things, we are missing by just taking a step outside this path and watching, observing, reflecting, because your thinking is what makes you who you are. A space where we keep nudging, touching, provoking, and at the same time enjoying, you know, mm -hmm. a lively place in every way. So, you know, 
I would be all the time looking for, you know, a space of that kind, which is not structured the way it is structured. Okay. Some partly there has to be, if someone says that, you know, I wish to learn. So you decide and maybe you can facilitate it for some time with a frame. Well, good enough. So, you know, it has to be a mix of all kinds of things vibrant space that's it and where you know no one is an expert everyone is a novice you are attempting you are trying you are doing some mistakes you learn by your own mistakes or someone else just points you oh, maybe you can try this way you know so all that so co-learning you know some facilitating and it happens across the age yeah yeah that's uh kind of what we were talking about with Cosmica, where you're telling every nine-year-old that they have to learn at the same pace as every nine-year-old in their neighborhood, when some kids could be doing eighth, ninth grade math and fourth grade, and some of them need extra time with their other subjects that they're not given. And instead, it's no steamroll right through it with everyone at the same age. I love the equity part of it that you're talking about as well. Less of less of formal textbook to be around. Only yes. resources which are not structured readily like that you know doesn't matter it is fourth or ninth or graduate <laughs> sounds like a beautiful learning space tushar i hope that you get the chance to create that and i'm sure your students would love and appreciate it thank you so much for that um jeffrey your uh second question um if you find yourself in a position to hire someone for work would you be more focused or concerned with their skills or degrees from you know the highest levels of uh, learning institution well, if I hire somebody for a job or to work together on a project, I personally actually never care about the degree or background uh, uh, and actually not always even about skills either, because if you do lack some some skills for the job, you can you can as well also learn them. That's for me the same thing. Not every project. I know everything about it. I have to to uh, to learn and, and, and do some courses myself as well. So uh, why would I expect from somebody that I uh, hire to work together with to know everything or to have all the skills available already? So if I uh, want to work together with somebody, I do care about their personality and about their, 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 uh, how passionate that person is. Please tell me about yourself, what you do. Why do you want to work together with me? Uh, what, what is it that uh, interests you in this project? Uh, just please tell me and, and come with a white. I'm not going to do a... I'm not going to predetermine my uh, my position by looking at, at uh, resume and, and, and determining already, okay, I will I will work together or not? No, please. I want to meet the person first, and uh, I don't. I, I personally don't care about degree at all. And a nice example that I would like to give is uh, in my last job, uh, uh, I also worked with several interns, and my best intern ever. I'm still impressed by it. He was this 14 year old boy who didn't even finish school. He was in school, uh, but he was the most passionate and uh, person ever worked with uh, as an intern. And one day he overheard me talking with a colleague about a certain technical problem that we were experiencing and finding a solution for. So the next day he spontaneously, uh, he was in the office earlier than I was. Uh, so when I came in, he, he said, oh, Jeff, you have to show you something. He opened his computer screen, showed me his uh, working code. He said, yeah, yesterday I overheard you uh, talking with the colleague about this problem you're experiencing. And it made me thinking. So in his free time uh, uh, after work, he just built a solution for us. He he built a working script that I that I could use, and I was so impressed by that. Like these are the kind of people that I want to work with. And uh, uh, I just remember what you said, uh, Mick, at the introduction that that it should be about age, or or you're forced to to. It's interesting. It, it, age doesn't even matter. I mean, it's 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 the person. It's the the person that you work together with. And in this case, it was a, a 14 year old who wrote the the solution for a technical problem from his passion. So these are the kind of people that I love working with. I love that you took the answer outside of the question, which is, in your view, degrees are third, skills are second, but first is personality and passion. Uh, yeah. I was working at a startup about a year ago, and they were hiring facilitators for their, for their enrichment program. And they said, oh, we got this guy. He's an electrical engineer. And this woman, she is a lecturer at Brown University. And I'm like, I, I don't care about any of that. My first question to them would be, do kids love you and do you love kids? Because if the yeah. answer is yes to that, we can train you for everything else. I can't make kids love you or make you relate to them in, in this instance. So I was looking at the same thing you were. 
Are you passionate and do you have the kind of personality that's conducive to making this environment a better place for all around you? And it comes back to kind of what we were talking about with Oliveville, which is the hu the human element. You know, people think mm -hmm. AI, we're so scared. No, that makes our humanity more important, not less. It makes it more of a commodity to be an empathetic and compassionate and caring person with great communication skills. So that is, wonderful. that's awesome, Jeffrey. Wonderful, yeah. Jeffrey. You know, I really love your answer for that. You know, no degrees, no skills, but just, you know, attitude and willingness to work and passion and, you know, yeah. how compassionate you are for your other fellow beings. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Thank <laughs> you so much, Jeffrey. So our, we're now on our third round of questions for each of our four pillars. Um, coming back to Cosmica, your third question, what do you feel like you need from the other three pillars that are represented here to feel empowered in your own journey as a self-learner? Uh, for parents, I would say that um, they, so, they should start uh, spending more time with their children and do conversations with them to help them growing. And the big thing they they should trust us like yeah that's the big thing they should trust us first <laughs> and and for other two pillars I as I'm an entrepreneurship right now so I don't feel any need of a degree so but I think if in future if it becomes bondage for me uh, so yeah how will I grow. <laughs> So, and on basis of that, the, uh, that they should provide more um, more platforms for us, more opportunities for us, uh, for mm -hmm. learners to on basis of their skill. That for on that uh, more more learners would be uh, would follow this path, would, because like. I can, yeah, exa for example, my friends, they are very scared of like this stuff, like for future, they are, they are just giving 10th board exam. That's my currently question I'm holding. So like what they're like, how will, what will I do? Like when my, one of my friends, like I want to become a footballer, but for a visa, I need degree. So that for that, I'm doing uh, this exam stuff. So... Mm. Yeah, yeah, that I just need from other three pillars that more providence that um, we can all grow on our um, skill. Mm. A lot of wisdom coming from you, especially in terms of parents. Like what you need from your parents is not um, anything more than more of their time and their trust. Right. Yeah. More of their time and their trust. I used to work at a school with really famous parents and these kids had guest houses that are bigger than the place I live in as a grown up in all of them would have traded that in to have more time with their parents who were going across the world doing their thing. So, so much wisdom in your answers, Cosmica. Thank you so much for that. That was, that was really great. Um, our third question for Oliveville, um, who is the child that you want to give to the world as a parent and what role do you think parents play in their child's learning journey? I believe that we have to help our kids find their most unique gifts because, well, physically they may look exactly like us, like my son looks like my mini-me, but they are their own person and I have to let them grow into the individual God has made them to be. As a homeschooling family, we're in a situation that we're balancing how to promote child-led activities and self-learning education with meeting the minimum minimum requirements of our own country's educational system. So Mick, you'd be like my ideal teacher in a formal school setting, like totally. And it's challenging. And I know it's tempting to just leave the system entirely, but then how can you ever win other people and help them understand if we're completely disconnected? So knowledge, as mentioned earlier, is just, you know, one Google search away or a YouTube video away. So instead of being the mom or dad knows best, kind of person in the family. Our role as parents now is to be a co-learner in a quite uncertain mm. future. And so as facilitators, guides, or coaches, just like teachers, that's that's the new role, I guess, because we're still learning. And as mentioned earlier as well by the other guests, there's sometimes the kids are smarter than us. And 
we can learn alongside the youth and help them by connecting them with peers all over the world and with mentors and industry experts who can really help them in their learning journey. We as parents and teachers may not be the main source of knowledge anymore, but the young ones can still benefit from learning from the wisdom that comes with age and experience. Personally, that's why I'm really grateful to have found a community of like-minded people in LinkedIn, like the wonderful people from Global Education Movement. And it was through LinkedIn that I also met Raheem Fatima, who's inspired us about interviewing. This gave birth to the Divergence, which is a youth, youth project started by our kids <laughs> together with their friends. And they've been able to interview remarkable people from different parts of the world. We've also found initiatives that support youth innovation, such as the Global Innovation Field Trip. And through it, we've been able to share our story to a global audience. It eventually led to our kids having the opportunities to be involved with International Kids Conference and virtual exchange student programs. So we share this to other families using our homeschool blog. And as a parent in this day and age, I feel that more than anything else, more than pushing them to be academic achievers, this is really the best way I can support my kids in their learning journey. Great. That's beautifully said. And, um, you know, the, the really the thing I latched onto is I used to be a tech teacher and I tell my kids, I'm going to teach you something that you will be better than me at everything that I teach you. It might even be tomorrow. It might be three months from now or a year from now, but you will excel at all of these things right past me. And then I'm going to ask you how to do certain things. And the look on their face when they <laughs> leave the class and go, I showed Mr. D how to do this thing. So empowering. So as a parent, Imagine if parents and teachers were both taking that attitude with the kids and how empowering that feeling would be for them to feel like I am not just the, the student. I also get to be the teacher with people who I look up to and respect. So that's beautifully and well put. Yeah, beautiful. And I, I don't want this podcast to end, but we are just running out of time. So we need to, you know. Uh, really yes. expedited, but so, uh, Tushar, your looking. third uh, and final question for the round is uh, similar to Cosmica's, which is what, as an educator, what do you need from the three other pillars uh, to succeed in your role as a, you know, an educator? Uh, the, the most important thing I feel is that we need to trust each other. Mm -hmm. That more often than not, we don't believe that people can do things on their own. Mm. No. Once we start trusting truly, it will start showing in small, you know, things in our own behavior. So no, then you allow people to take risks and learn from that. You know, if you don't do mistakes, there is a big question. Are you learning anything? You know, so... <clears throat> Everything that you do, it is your decision. Okay. Not someone is pushing you or someone is demanding something from you. Now, if, you know, that kind of environment, a nurturing environment is available for, you know, whatever your role, you know, the role comes much later. You are as a individual human being. And that's where I, you know, I feel more often than not that it is all the emotions all bundled, you know. And there is much less space to voice, you know, right or wrong. Don't judge, you know, just let me first voice it out. Why am I feeling like this? What happened? And then can we take the conversation forward? Not blaming me <laughs> because it's my feeling. But can it be looked at in other ways? Mm. People are, you know, elder. They have more experience. <clears throat> Willing to listen to others if only you listen to me. You know, it's it's, it's a mutual. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Tushar. Uh, yeah, giving space and opportunity to make mistakes and to hear each other is is Good. tantamount to this. So thank you so much, Jeffrey. Your uh, final question of your three um, is, you know, working as a professional, how do you think you can support creating? What are ways in which you think you can support creating a learner-led education system? What are ways you can contribute to that? So uh, my answer to that question is actually a real project I have in my head. It's my dream project as a, being a digital nomad is to create this learning center 
where I create a co-living and co-working space for digital nomads. And in the digital nomad community, what I see wonderful people, these are people that make the same choice I made and work from their heart and their passion and do what they love to do. So they can come there and stay for a few weeks or a few months and uh, work in the co-working space. And this e-learning center would be open to other people as well to come in. Uh, and I would like to uh, especially open it up to people that don't have access to education that much. So they can come in and just have access to uh, to computers and to infrastructure as well. And then it is my vision that uh, there are some natural connections can can uh, come into existence between uh, 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 people that wants to learn and, and somebody is doing it already. And I hope that they can connect in this learning center and learn from each other. And the one could be a mentor to the other, but also vice versa. The digital nomad, the expert, could learn from the learner and there could be some... Uh, some uh, uh, pollination, is that a good word in English? Pollination yeah. between uh, uh, inter intergenerational, intercultural. Uh, Cross pollination, uh, yes. See, uh, yes, in indeed. So, uh, and then the second part, uh, how to convince people. I don't know that, uh, about the word convincing that much because I, I don't like. I don't like convincing people. I like that people come into a realization from their own. Uh, but I would like to lead by example by realizing a project like that. Just show that there are different ways and better ways of, uh, uh, of education. And, uh, that is a, a beautiful vision and one that I hope will come true for you. Uh, my former students become my teaching assistants and end up teaching my younger students. And that's a great cycle to create ongoing learning for. So thank you so much to all four of our beautiful pillars and panelists for your heartfelt and insightful and inspiring answers. It really was an excellent conversation. I'm gonna turn it back over to Arshana for your final exam in the form of rapid fire questioning. Good luck, everybody. Thanks, thanks, thanks Mick. And I think we are running out of the time, so I need to hurry up because uh, we might go out of power here as well. So anyway, uh, one thing, um, so this are the common question for everyone. Just think your answer and can, uh, answer one by one uh, one thing you unlearned since you started self-exploration or you started growing in your thoughts or in maturity if anyone can go ahead please, yeah. you know not and necessarily all all the adults are wise wisdom okay. exists also in children uh -huh, yeah we'll, we'll just uh, have one one sentence answers here so yeah please go ahead <laughs> okay, I, I would like to go ahead. Um, we can learn anything. Very nice. <laughs> A little Jaffe. Uh, yeah, I have I have unlearned to live by rules, schedules, deadlines, and structures as uh, the main way to lead my life. Very nice. A little. <laughs> I should believe in myself more, basically. Mm, beautiful. Very nice. If you were to write your autobiography or any book, what would the title be? Yeah, can, can I go ahead uh, in this one? My book that I probably will write uh, would be would have the title Make Dreams Come True. And it's about how to reach any goal in life you want from the passion of your heart. Nice. <laughs> Mine is work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, yeah, uh, room of errors, room of errors. Wow, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> yeah. Learning never stops. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Uh, name three life skills which one must have in their life. Anyone can go, we can go around. So, you should. Have all the skills to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. The first core thing, because so if you have a confidence of that, everything comes much easier. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So <laughs> uh, the, the most important skill I have is uh, learn how to discover passion in yourself, but especially also in other people. Uh, how to be great at making mistakes and how to get all the best out of that and know how to empower yourself and other people beautiful uh, first um cooking and second convincing power yeah very nice yeah, that, <laughs> 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 my, my, 
creativity, compassion, and critical thinking. Very nice. Yep. yep. Beautifully. We get so many beautiful answers from everyone, you know. Uh, okay. So uh, in one word, you need to tell me what happiness means to you and what success means to you in one word. Uh, I would <laughs> go first. Uh, happiness, whether I get any gift or I make gift for people. And success is whenever I complete my artwork or any challenge. Very nice. Very simple but sweet answer. <laughs> For me, happiness is being purposeful and success is finding meaning. Mm. Finding yeah. meaning what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I got happiness to me is to make other people smile and success is uh, fast beating hearts from excitement. Mm. Oh, to share. <laughs> yeah. uh, at peace within. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, success is putting your best. That's it. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, one answer, which uh, one question is coming now, which uh, the poster everyone has seen for the voiced podcast, right? Uh, we want to transition from uh, this side to other side and I would just ask uh, what do we transition from uh, consumption to where do we want to transition from consumption to where just you know to recreate the education uh, the poster has I, I don't I hope everyone has seen the poster carefully <laughs> Kasmika any clue and you yeah. can see. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. Creation. <laughs> <laughs> Answer is right in front of you guys. <laughs> yeah. So, this is something I just put together as a family, our family's journey, right? Where we want to transition from left side to right side. So, consumption to creation, leadership to leadership, growth to prosperity, world to world, you know? So, um, yeah. So, Kasmika wins. Everyone fails on this. <laughs> okay. Um, what is one common belief uh, or practice which needs a paradigm mindset shift uh, in the current world? I think that would be a, the need for a college degree. Maybe it would continue to be relevant if they modify the curriculum or program, but it needs more real world problem solving and industry experience instead of just classroom lectures and exams. Very nice. Vishal, what, what are you passionate about in solving a real world problem? It is not that what you acquire, but which problem of the world you are ready to solve or willing to solve? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Kasmika, Jeffrey, come on fast. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So, sorry, Ashana, the, the internet connection was a little bit dropping here in Mexico. Uh, so I didn't, no, it... I didn't hear the last question. I'm so sorry. Oh, 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 so what is one common belief or practice needs a paradigm mindset shift in the world today? Oh, yeah, for me, uh, that's, that's one is very clear that kids or learners in general should be told what to do and how to do it. Always be corrected and can't make mistakes. That's something that has to get out of the world as soon as possible. Mm, beautiful. Kasmika. Yeah, um, I don't know. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I think Jeffrey answered the question for you as well. So, uh, okay, so quickly, one thing uh, from all of us, one thing we need to start in current education system, stop in current system, and continue doing in the current system. Who is first? I can go first. Okay, yeah, start yeah. acknowledging that going back is not the best option, but moving forward is. Stop mm -hmm. commercial, commercializing basic education and grow. I want to grow more helpful relationships, not the kind that makes us that um, not the kind that make us feel like we're competing with each, with each other, but collaborating. Very nice. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, I can. Yeah. So uh, start freedom to ask questions mm -hmm. and stop judging 
and mm-hmm. grow um bonding with students wow beautiful tushar jeffrey anyone can go ahead yeah i have a uh, stop correcting start empowering and grow passionate people mm very nice <laughs> tushar start, yeah start judge, judging basically again you know assessment is a bigger biggest hurdle i feel because and start is believing in everyone mm-hmm. and probably continue is that the diverse you know people and the community and all that equity bring it equity everywhere because so that's a Wonderful. huge learning Wonderful. okay so uh, now we have a individual question for each of you uh, for learner uh, what is your favorite time pass uh oh sketching and dr- daydreaming yes okay <laughs> for for parent uh one thing your children hates most about your parenting <laughs> i think it's that i have not mastered the ability to listen to them at the same time <laughs> it always happens that more than one would want to speak to me at the exact same time uh-huh. <laughs> okay uh for the educator tushar is one thing you absolutely hate but still you need to do it on a daily basis as an educator <laughs> daily basis yeah in fact you know uh, so much of you know uh, muck that exists in the system you know you have to manage with that because you can't just clean it at one go mm mm-hmm. most incompetent people who are at the decision making positions in the system and that bothers me so much yes, yes very true i don't know when it is going to go away anyway uh, the last question is for jeffrey yeah uh, yeah so uh, what is your message for the youth today uh, someone who wants to be a professional like you But yeah my message would be dare to question everything and don't take everything from granted and don't take everything that you're being told but uh know that you are a beautiful person by yourself and you are enough by yourself and you have everybody has beautiful talents and different things that uh and this diversity is a beautiful thing so know that and act from from that position other than uh than trying to live up to the expectations of other people Yeah, you yourself are a beautiful person and live up to your expectations in life and make the best out of it. Beautiful. I don't want this conversation to end, but uh, unfortunately we need to uh, go, but uh, wonderful speaking to all of you. It was so amazing. Uh like Kasmika, Alivel, Jaffrey and Tushar. It was, you know, I I I think uh, it's kind of igniting um uh, the other uh people's mind uh, we are going to do this through this podcast series is that we want to listen to each and every voice and uh, it's running on a weekly basis and we are enjoying it thoroughly and we would uh, actually love and um, you know uh, you guys can come up and you can also be a host on our podcast in the future episode so we are just kind of creating this beautiful community where all four pillars are working together and thanks a lot mick uh as usual you are such an amazing person you know and i just love like i can spend hours with you you know so we can have discussion and we can listen to mick for hours so wonderful thanks a lot again and uh, i don't think we have a uh, um, any questions but then we had um, i think almost 10 to 15 people uh, listening us to live uh, you know so uh, thanks everyone from the audience uh, we really appreciate your time and uh, we would love you to be also part of this podcast and we would love to bring you on the panel in future as well so thanks again and have a good night have a good day and uh, enjoy thank yourself you for, you thank know. you everybody thank excellent you job panelists so thank you so much for all of your heartfelt answers they were really inspiring thank yeah. you you did a great job excellent yeah. work thank you so much yeah. bye everybody you. bye arshina bye. see you soon bye we'll connect now through other media now <laughs> yes, yeah let's yeah, do yeah. Yeah. most definitely don't, don't leave your linkedin group which has made for you and then we'll create a bigger group for all the panelists again yes, correct <laughs> we'll continue there. yeah absolutely all right